Hey guys, welcome to game two between Rancor and Bug. Rancor starting as the yellow Zerg in the upper left-hand corner, six o'clock location. We have Bug starting as the blue Protoss. Game one going to Rancor. There were opportunities, I feel like, for Bug to potentially win that match previously. The supply count was a bit deceptive just because it, for a lot of that match, Bug was sitting at like 70 probes, a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit too many probes. I actually would like to hear Protoss's opinion on this, like how many probes is too many in certain situations. But I feel like that cut into his supply count as far as actual just raw attack units, which he needed as Rancor was switching into like that big economy mode. And Rancor, yeah, just seemed like he was happy. He was content to just sit back, play big defensive macro, kind of almost like be a... Uh, Zerg player who's like, maybe I'm going to attack you, maybe I'm not. I want to keep you on your toes and grab the opportunities I can. So he was able to pick off a gateway. I'm still disappointed he missed that weapons one uh, and taking out that forge. But yeah, doing damage here and there. Putting in a threat of kind of an all-in attack at any moment. But at the same time, just sitting back and macroing. And I feel like that is the most that's what makes successful Zerg, is that unpredictability. Bug getting a scout into this upper left-hand base. He is going to, in fact, see that 12, 12 pool. Rancor removing his Overlord to the third spawn. This is on Power Bond as well, which I'm wondering if this is going to play... I'm not sure if this is going to play more towards Rancor's playstyle or Bug's playstyle. I think Bug, if he does play economically aggressively... Uh, it might pay off for him this time. It looks like he is opting for Forge first, grabbing a couple minerals and returning home. And I believe he's going to want to put down a cannon before Nexus upon seeing that spawning pool warp in. A drone is making its way to that bottom right-hand base. It should be able to get a scout in. We'll see how long it can survive. One, it, one advantage for Zerg is when they can get that drone in, especially with the Forge first openers, it takes a while to evict that drone scout. So they can, they can get lots of visual information. Other options, of course, are throwing that Overlord, kind of sacrificing that Overlord into the main. I don't, I, I'm wondering if it's worth it, actually, just to get that that drone in. Never mind, he's going to go ahead and pull that out. I wonder if it's worth it to go ahead and get that drone in to just save an Overlord later, if you can just keep it alive for that period of time. And maybe even force units out, you know, force a Dragoon, comparatively, force other things. Four Zerglings being built here uh, to go ahead and chase that Probe Scout down. Natural Expansion is on the way. But it looks like he's going to opt to not try to sneak that drone in. Going to go ahead and back it off. There, we do have an Nexus warping in. There's a gateway that's going to be placed well inside there to go ahead and block everything off. Overlord redirecting to go ahead and take that territory up here. But anyway, I'm wondering now if Rancor is going to go ahead and decide to go ahead and, and try to sneak a third base somewhere. Also, Tassium's correcting me. He, man it, he did catch the forge between the, pl the plus one. So I just, uh, perhaps I missed it. So nice job, Rancor. I take it back. Ignore ignore that that uh, commentator. Don't take anything commentator says ever too seriously, first of all. And me in particular. Zergling getting wiped out by that cannon. Thank you, Tassim, for that. Nexus. Just about to finish. Third hatch inside base once again. This almost... This almost reminds me of, again, the kind of that 2008 to 2009 playstyle in Tyrion. I'm wondering if this is becoming more standard for Zerg at large. I'll have to watch some more streams on my vacation. I'm wondering if this is becoming more standard at large or if this is uh, just Rancor's comfortable playing style. Because I, I do feel like there's been a shift more probe easily being dispatched, but does see that third hatchery in interior to the base. It almost feels like we're going back in time a little bit. Although with more... Uh, still with more gateway zealot timings. We do see a Hydralisk den produced initially and that Hydralisk speed being upgraded. So it's three hatch Hydra initially from Rancor. So doing it kind of a replay of game win. Cybernetics core is up for Bug. I'm wondering if he is going to opt to skip for Stargate again. He is going Stargate this time, feeling a little less comfortable with the scouting of information he has. Zealot going ahead and plugging that gap between the gateway and the forge. And a Rancor, yeah, playing very, very cautiously, grabbing a very early sunken colony, which leads me to believe that, yeah, he's got that Hydralis Den up, but I think he is planning on playing more defensively and just pumping drones here and going for, again, sort of that macro lead and win. We'll see. Citadel of Dune is up. 
So it is possible we're going to see more of that Bisu buildish play. We're going to see High Templar, Dark Templar a little bit earlier. It's also possible that we're still, this is oftentimes typical, just to get that Zealot one, that the Zealot leg speed and go for that plus one attack. Plus one is being upgraded. But I'm really curious on Rancor here, building a handful of Hydralisks. Perhaps kind of going in between, and he is getting that Hydralisk range. Zealot leg speed is being upgraded. So I think we're going to see the... We'll see if we see two additional gateways after this uh, Corsair gets confirmation that there's no Spire. Because oftentimes what we'll see is about a 7 minute, 8 minute, somewhere in there, level 1 uh, push with Zealot leg speed. And I think that actually might be pretty devastating against what Rancor is fielding here. Initial Hydralisks are there, but it looks like they're mostly playing defensively to try to protect Overlord's from Corsair harassment. They are starting to, and as I say that, they're starting to move out. Some Zerglings getting towards the front. Seeing that there's no Spire there, are we seeing the additional gateway? So there's one additional gateway, and I'm expecting to see another momentarily. Hydralisks are starting to funnel down. So this is almost like a pseudo Hydralisk bust. Not precisely. Third cannon warping in. Level one weapon. Weapon's about halfway finished. And again, this is where the Hydralisks might... Are they going to go for... No, they're going to go straight for the cannons. Zelt's coming off the line to go ahead and engage. That's forcing another cannon to be built here in the background. I do like what Rancor does here is where he's just building a handful of units to be a threat, grabbing another cannon. So he loses one... He's basically losing one Hydralisk to force Bug to spend 150 resources. And he still might... You can see he's not... He's got more Hydralisks coming down, but it's not like a... And actually, he might be going for a bust here. Cannon Warping in that should be able to hit that Overlord, I believe, from the high ground. Nope, it's not actually going to go for it. Starting to work on that Weapons 1. The Hydralisks pressing in once again before they have the full grouping. And I think Rancor is going to go for a bust. He's dedicated a lot of Larva to these Hydralisks. Now the Hydralisks regrouping. Two, three more Cannons Warping down, so it looks like Bug has a good sense of it. That level 1 Weapons does not get cancelled. And the forge does go down. He's holding now with the Hydralisks he has. The Corsair is making its way back out to perhaps do some additional harassment and perhaps draw these Hydralisks back home. And upon seeing all of these cannons, it looks like Rancor is just going to go ahead and... No, I take it back. He's going to continue to press forward with more Hydralisks. Takes that Corsair out. So right now, this is one of those situations where if Bug holds, this is a lot of resources that Rancor has dedicated to Hydralisks in the mid-game. Granted, he plopped down a lot of cannons. But if he can if he can get resources up, he does have Zelt leg speed. If he can just defend this and keep those Hydralisks down, he will end up in an okay economic position. The Hydralisks starting to press forward. Probes initially coming off the line. A lot of Hydralisks getting wiped out before they're even able to get a shot off. Rancor having a lot of trouble. He's maybe opting to pull back. He's going to go ahead and grab two additional hatcheries here. At this nearby expansion. I'm not sure what to call this. Kind of the inside. Is it the inside 12? Or is it the inside, like, I don't know, 10? This inside base. I'm just going to call it the interior base <laughs> up by Rancor. Fanning out the Hydralisks. But that's kept him down to 27 drones. And a lot of gateways are being plopped down from Bug. Is getting size storm. Has double forge upgrades as well. So at this stage, it's when Bug feels comfortable pressing out an attack and Rancor needs to be very very careful in his level of play at this stage because he's trying to expand build a bunch of larva and kind of reestablish his economy and in theory in theory when these busts fail bug is at an advantage trying to pick a little bit at that zealot that zealot going to go ahead and and sneak back here and with the side storm if at least a high templar sneaks behind this and holds that cannon line it's going to take a lot for these Hydralisks to bust through. And with all of this gateway production, Bug can more or less freely kind of run out and start devastating things. Dark Templar being produced. We are seeing Zergling speed finally being upgraded. We have a Spire out as well. No cannon, sorry, two cannons being warped into the main. Another Corsair making its way out to get some, some of that critical scouting information for Bug. This is the critical thing is, is he going to see this additional expansion? Now Rancor kind of folding this back into a contain, but I feel like it's a contain at a disadvantage. It's a contain where, okay, yeah, you're going for contain, scour nice timing on the Scourge. Easily going to be able to take that Corsair out. They're going to, that does reveal that there is a Spire 
Dark Templar making its way out. There's, there is one Overlord, but no Creep Colony yet. Creep Colony's just morphing. So Dark Templar might be able to get some kills here at, at Rancor's interior expansion. Now I don't like Power Bond. I just don't like Power Bond because it's one of the... I don't know what to call this base. The interior. It looks like that Dark Templar getting there just a fraction late. He's going to go ahead and check and make sure there's no additional expansion up here. Zergling's kind of fanning out for the contain. Two Mutalisks wandering forward. Mostly, I assume, just to get scouting information. Sees the double forge and a significant amount of dragoons and cannons. Bug building a sizable attack force. He's built. He's very Templar heavy with this. So he's mostly relying on Templar and Dragoons in his composition. As far as a follow-up, Queen's Nest Evolution Chamber plopping down. The Dragoon's going to go ahead and press out, peck away, do some damage. Armor 1 and Weapons 1 now coming online. I'm wondering if that's going to be the trigger for Bug to go ahead and start pressing out. He does need to start moving out and getting aggressive at some point. Because if he just sits back and lets Rancor macro up, he will end up running him over eventually. Right now... Significant supply count lead to Bug. Starting to press out. a Psystorm, a little bit of an empty Psystorm there. It's having a little bit of trouble kind of getting this army. And this honestly looks a bit... Okay, now it's starting to re-engage. Kind of looks a bit thin. Mutalist diving and trying to pick off High Templar instead. Costing Rancor two Mutalisks. Now that army starting to fold out and looking for these Psy Storms on these whole position lurkers. The Psy Storms will be critical here. Mostly empty, not catching the bunch here to the south, but it looks like follow-up Psy Storms going to catch it. And now, yeah, Bug getting some map control and starting to press out. Some Zealots going to be produced as far as a follow-up. So with the cannons at his main, with reinforcements, kind of a skeleton crew, it feels like, for the amount of supply that's out there once again. If he can push up, he needs to start... Attacking one of these bases before Rancor can just start turning around and turning into that Sauron Zerg. Where you just start flooding units across the map. He's going to catch an Overlord here. Another small attack force of Rancor is going to try to engage this. It is very Zealot light, so the Zerglings can get a lot accomplished against these Dragoons. Finally, some Zealots moving in. A decent size storm clearing out some of those Zerglings. And Bug trying to group this army to go ahead and engage... At the inside expansion. <clears throat> Two Sutton Colonies are up. Rancor positioning around. Trying to re-engage. Decent positioning here for Bug. Loses a High Templar. Some good size storms. Only caught a little bit of his Zealot right there. And repositioning back around. He's going to go ahead and grab his natural expansion. I'm a little bit concerned with this play here. It looks like he's going to go ahead and back off. And turn it into, again, a long-term macro match. But... My concern with this turning into a macro match is once again, we have Hive Tech just finishing for Rancor. He's behind in the overall supply count, but this is where Adrenal Glands comes in. He's got pretty decent upgrades. He's going to have level 1 uh, melee and carapace coming online. Rancor, with the amount of units that he can start fielding soon... Might force Bug into more defensive position, which, again, might turn into bases and, and things along those lines. We'll see how things stand. Anyone's match. Zergling going to go ahead and push that probe out the 3 o'clock. Rancor regathering some Hydralisks. Actually still like Bug's position overall. Sign uh, significant supply lead with those double forge upgrades. I think he's still going to maintain that advantage. Rancor going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock base. But this is when Zerg starts getting dangerous. Has three gas. Has that hive tech. And I feel like once Zergling hits, once Zerglings hit that adrenal upgrade, they just become so much more dangerous. Good Psy Storms. Catching a lot of those Hydralis. Those Hydralis pressing in on those mules and just melting them. From the right. No Psy Storm to feel this. And just honestly, it felt like just donating Dragoons right there. Rancor gonna go ahead and back off. Might press into this 3 o'clock base while Bugs press back, trying to defend from multiple locations. Some Zerglings, I'm not sure if they're misrallied or misattacked, sneaking around, keeping an eye on where the army is located. Still an army staged and just watching as these cannons are warping in. Now moving up, that's going to cause Bug to go ahead and press forward, but Bug does have to worry about counterattacks. Canceling that Nexus here at the 3. Keep in mind, he does have a lot of cannons. 
warped in. I'm wondering if we're going to see a Hydralisk, uh, more of a press towards, sorry, Ultralisks, because we are seeing those, the Zergling upgrades. Zergling's engaging. It looks like the Zealot's able to get on top of those Zerglings to make those Dragoons feel much more comfortable. Hydralisks engaging from behind. A little bit of a misfire, kind of a little bit behind those Hydralisks. And Rancor engaging from multiple angles, able to pick off at least one Eye Templar, trying to pick off another. Good Psy Storm again, stepping into it, working on that Archon now. Another beautiful Psy Storm, but Bug's army is dwindling. And he's losing all of his supply here. He does have this Dark Templar that's starting to go to work with no Overlord overhead. Again, marching up to go ahead and grab his third base. His main is looking thin, his natural expansion's up. So he's going to try to grab this third base, but he's basically two base versus... What's soon to be four base Zerg. With additional hatcheries being plopped down. And Rancor defending this very, very well. Getting Phenomenized Carapace at this stage. He has three evolu uh, evolution chambers. Pressing that upgrade advantage. Zerglings trying to evict these Zealots before cannons are able to warp in here at that three o'clock. And it looks like the Zealots holding that ramp very, very well with that level two weapons upgrade. Zerglings still flooding in here piecemeal, but I think the Zealots should be able to clean this up. Might be able to pick that probe. For, ooh, forcing a cannon cancellation. Yeah, the Zelts, the Zelts hold. And more Zelts moving across the map for Bug. Bug needs to, yeah, slow some economy down. It looks like he got 14 kills. Sorry, I missed that. 14 kills on this Dark Templar. I think that was still the Dark Templar that was in the middle of the map. It gets cleaned up. Doesn't find any drones. Really weakens that sunken colony. Some Zelts diving into the natural expansion. Zerglings engaging right there. There are two sunken colonies to go ahead and prevent that attack from getting too much further forward. An Overlord's going to go ahead and check out what's going on there at the 3 o'clock base. It's probably going to get wiped out almost instantaneously as all of those cannons warp in if it doesn't move out. Looks like, yeah, okay, it's moving back out momentarily. The Zealots engaging there, realizing they're not going to get a lot accomplished. Pulling right back out. Looks like, I think they're going to try to re-engage here and defend this 3 o'clock base. Hydralisks being caught in open field there. The Zealots having a little bit of trouble in their micro getting across. Rancor... Able, not able to breach 3 o'clock. He's had this high tech up for quite some time. It's mostly gone to just pure upgrades. He's got queens. Has opted to build queens. Interestingly enough. Some Sty Storm around the corner. Cleaning up a lot of R Rancor's forces. And queens overhead, I guess. We'll see how this uh, plays out. It's not a typical thing. So we got this base is mined out. It's going to be two base effectively. So natural expansion is still mining. Main still mining. So it's basically two base versus four base. Zer so two base Protoss versus four base Zerg here. And Bug just not able, has been on the defensive this entire time and really hasn't been able to get a lot accomplished, it feels like. Try Bug trying to go ahead and establish this upper right hand base. Rancor pushing in. So I think Rancor is like, okay, maybe I can just survive, you know, win the storm. Go for a long-term macroeconomic win. He does have a huge supply lead. I think he, if he just concentrates his forces, he might be able to press in and go ahead and establish another base here. Still has the Stark Templar that's been the guardian over that expansion for quite some period of time. But Rancor, maybe he wants to take that... I, I, actually, this is what I want to see. It's him go for the, the command center in the middle of the map. With the queens. I'm wondering if that's a thing, and that would be incredible to see. Parasiting the Archon to keep an eye on it. This is kind of an interesting additional issue for Bug. I think this is takeable. I think this can be infested. And infested Terrans, especially with drop, are incredible. Once again, we're seeing Greater Spire being morphed. Queens sneaking around... A little bit of a... I don't know that that was worth the size storm. But now Bug also has to think about protecting the middle of the map and keeping map control here to keep that command center from falling into Rancor's hands. Good surround. The Zerglings able to get on those Dragoons, melting them fairly quickly. Good size storms on the Hydralisk underneath. The Archons engaging the Mutalists to the north with the Zealots, eating some of their own size storm. But it looks like Bug getting the better part of this battle overall. He does have that critical level 3 weapons. And yeah, melting a lot of Rancor's forces and has an army unopposed, still might be able to press up and perhaps with a round of reinforcements engage and maybe even take out one of these bases. He's also establishing 
that northern three base simultaneously. Zergling's flooding across. Lurker Tech finally being upgraded. This feels like very late Lurker Tech from Rancor. As this 12 o'clock base is under risk. Rancor pressing in. Sunken Colony's down. And this is a lot of... I don't know that Rancor's going to be able to defend this. This just feels like there's just too much here. High Templar nearby in case there is any, is any sort of concentration of attack force. So this it looks like Hydro's getting side stormed right as they spawn. Not fun. One hatchery down. More reinforcements flooding up. Rancor finally able to get a concentrated attack force. Still, I think there... Well, nope. Another, there's not a second side storm to really push this back. The Creep Colony's down. So... Is Bug going to reinforce and continue to press in this 12 o'clock base? Looks like no. He's going to back off with the Dragoons he has. So Rancor defends. Only loses a single hatchery. Is able to take out some High Templar. More Parasites being placed down. So now, three bases have been established for Bug. But Rancor is still sitting on four. And it looks like he's in position to go ahead and take an additional two bases in the upper right. Both players happy to play more of a long-term economic match. I love this. Rancor at the 3 o'clock saying, okay, I'm just going to play the, the long starvation match. Getting a robotics facility and a robotics support bay to produce reavers to deal with potential hive tech, defilers, etc. in the late game. Hive is up. Still no defiler mounds. Still no ultralis cavern. And Rancor well behind in supply overall. The observers are out of position to help deal with these ultralisks. There is a lot of Psy Storm to obliterate. These these are really grouped up. Oh, but it's almost like hold position lurkers. Bug not expecting lurkers this late in the game. Finally, the observers making their way down. There's plenty of dragoons to engage this. Some zerglings trying to sweep through and pick off those dragoons that are trying to take the lead for those lurkers. They're going to go ahead and back off. And in the meantime, Rank, you're going to go ahead and start taking everything in that upper right-hand corner. Bug opting not to engage those lurkers. Honestly, that was lucky on Rancor's part that he didn't eat a lot of Psystorm and just lose a lot of lurkers for practically nothing. So Bug readjusting. It looks like he wants to go ahead and take another shot at the natural expansion and the main. It's mostly undefended. Rancor is pushing through. I don't think he's going to get anything accomplished here. A lot of Reavers and a bunch of cannons to defend this base. And that is a lot of troops to lose as his natural expansion is under assault. So the Zealots pressing in. Those creep colonies just getting obliterated. And that's going to be more hatcheries down. And critically, if they can get up into the main, some juicy, juicy tech that is just waiting to get obliterated. Losing that hive would be a big swing in this match. Lurkers trying to dive in. To take this 3 o'clock base. The Reaver is still sitting there trying to do what they can. Rancor dedicating everything to take this base out. But I don't know that it is worth it. To lose everything else. So takes that out. Troops are refolding to the 3 o'clock. But was it worth it? We'll, we'll find out. Hive at risk. Some drones sacrificing their lives to delay... Just a little bit. Now they're peeling out. And this base is just going to get obliterated. And this is all of the tech, all of the production. I do not see Hive being, or Lair being upgraded at any of these extingent bases. Rancor needs to plop some stuff down now. Ultralist Cavern, Spawning Pool, etc. He is building a Spawning Pool uh, someplace. He's going to have to rely on Zergling Defense. So wiping that out. So he's happy to lose that inside three. To make it so that Zerg can't produce anything. To follow this up. Concentrating on that hive now. And marching in to go ahead and take that inside 6 o'clock base. I believe that Bug has this match as soon as this hive falls. There is an Ultralist Cavern being built. But it's going to be quite some time. Before that Ultralist Cavern can, cavern can be productive. And as long as Bug just pumps Zealots. And takes bases in the meantime. And starts pressing into the rest of these locations. With the attack force he has, might want to cancel this actually with this small counterattack. He needs to get this attack force moving. He can just start sweeping across the map. 
and establish enough map control and enough map presence that Rancor isn't going to be able to, to compete with it. And it looks like he is doing that. Bug is grabbing additional expansions. In the bottom left, he might even be able to retake this 3 o'clock. Starting to sweep back across. Lurkers in position, wiping out all sorts of Dragoons. As Bug just had these on move command and there are no observers. And the I Templar aren't going to get their storms off either. What a huge swing! Oh! Bug had it! And just whiffing with those side storms as well. They're getting a follow up side storm. Oh no! That's got to be so frustrating for Bug. He had this match locked. Absolutely locked. And with that, Rancor finding new life. Rancor just diving in with these Zerglings. More Zerglings pressing down. That is debilitating. We still got a game. Inside six, Nexus is quickly going to get wiped out. I don't think this base is going to get established as well. Unfortunate. That was a that was a really heads up play on Rancor's part, and Bug has to be kicking himself right now. Just absolutely flabbergasted. Oh, Nexus getting wiped out. Now he's back down to two bases, so it's now two base versus four base. Once again. And an Ultralisk Cavern is in play. So. With that. With the. And we have 3-3 three, three weapons. 3-3. Three, three, I believe. Yeah. So. Doesn't even need an Evolution Chamber to follow this up. Rancor has everything he needs to, to pull this match out. In a huge turn of events. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's StarCraft for you. Upper right hand base. Rancor just kind of regathering his troops. All he has to do now is keep denying this inside six and this inside three. Keep the Ultralisks pumping. Get his economy rolling. Maybe clear out this base and go ahead and establish that eventually. But that was that was beautiful presence of mind on Rancor. And Bug, I feel like all of a sudden. In a bit of trouble. Let's see if he can defend this inside six. That's going to be critical for his long-term survival. I feel like Rancor might just save some minerals and wait. Just pump the Ultralisks. And play from there. Now regathering. One Ultralisks in this grouping. That High Templar just feels... That poor High Templar. You just ha can't even attack. Just has to watch this happen. He's got like a, a slap. The best he can do is high five an Ultralisk. That inside six has been wiped out. A Reaver... And a Zealot have somehow managed to get into this upper right-hand base. Was that a shuttle? Another shuttle is trying to drop the upper left-hand corner. Slow this economy down. A little bit of a nervous whiff right there. Still gets four kills. Missing things otherwise. The Zergling is going to be able to flood up and preserve that base. So, Bug still showing signs of life here. Nice drop. But, he's... His, this mineral only is looking very, very thin. He's only got this base mining. Rancor doesn't even need to attack this base. All he has to do is sit back and kill any army that comes to him, which he can easily do with Ultralisks, Hydralisks, Lurkers, etc. Bug is hurting for gas. Maybe this Dark Templar can go and make something happen. Lair being re-upgraded. Another Nexus trying to be grabbed at the 3 o'clock. This is a desperation attempt by Rancor. Trying to press forward. Might be able to get some additional bases. His Rancor is distracted. Cancellation right there. Trying to regather and basically he's just trying to play whack-a-mole with taking expansions and being everywhere at once. And doing a nice job blockading. There is no Overlord to detect that Dark Templar. And Dark Templar... It's not going to be able to... I don't think it's going to be able to protect this base or keep it from falling. Reinforcements from Rancor are going to go ahead and clean up that attack for us, but not before that hatchery is taken out. Another hatchery being grabbed. I like that hatchery take, actually. Have the close reinforcement points. I'm not sure Rancor realizes they're finally an Overlord moving in, so he did realize. Still a Dark Templar here, but it looks like it's going to walk into detection range. It's going to get wiped out. And the vice is now closing for Bug. Probe's idle at the 3 o'clock base. The mineral only is all that's producing. Lurker getting free shots as he's moving across. He's got to do a desperation 
attack going uh, to try to take this inside three. And in the interim, Ran Rancor continues to expand. More reinforcements starting to flood down. Another Queen's Nest being grabbed. Just all sorts of yellow moving across the map. Psy Storm, nice dodge by Rancor to kind of walk out of that Psy Storm range. I'm not sure if that was intentional or just on move. The Zealot's going to be wiped out, and I think this is going to be GG right here. As soon as the Zealot Force is cleared up by Bug. Ugh. And I got to say, this is defeat from the jaws of victory from for Bug, and that is just devastating. Just absolutely devastating. There is GG. So that's that's got to be so frustrating for Bug. But congratulations to Rancor. And what a heads up play by Rancor. To reposition those lurkers. To pin that army in. Slow it down. And then, and ended up. I don't think he realized he was just going to end up wipe, wiping everything out. So Rancor advances to the winner's match. Bug will move to the loser's match. For people on Twitch. I will be out for two weeks. Uh, approximately. But I will be back in time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.